Hello, hello, how are you? How is everyone this Friday, March 1st? So it is so good to see you in the waning days of winter. And I hope you're all okay. All right, let's see who is here. I'm not used to being here on a Friday, but I'm here and I'm so glad to see. Don't worry, I I don't want anyone to feel bad if they couldn't come on a Friday night. But last night we had so many errands to get done and it was like everything just started piling up at once and it was like, well, we better get we better get these things knocked off. So we got back our microwave oven. And so we're going to run it through its paces this weekend. And I have a lot to show you with the art quilt. Hello, Barbara. Yes, it is. Happy Friday. Cheryl Hogan, how good to see you, darling. And Denise, hi, sweetie. Oh, <laughs> I love how you um abbreviate our show that is so exciting also i put another a new quilt on the wall and i really love it because it's all jenny buyer fabrics and i have been continuing to work on this room i'm so happy about that all right so let's i'll show you what i've got so far i thought i would have a lot more done but I spent 12 hours on this quilt since we last saw each other. And I don't know about y'all, but 12 hours is a lot for me. And uh, especially when I have so many things going on. So I don't have any of the invisible thread sewn down, but I'll show you what I did do. I looked at it and said, I need to go ahead and get it, whatever filling in I'm going to do, get it done now before I do anything more. And so I just sat down and worked with it and said, what are the plants, mostly it was doing the landscaping, what are the plants that mean the most to me in the yard? And uh, so I tried to, you know, only I will know which ones they are, but, okay, so now I only have one tree left, and I would like to show you how I'm working on that. So let me bring you over here. I'll bring it down more. Okay, let's bring it here. All right. And I, for the most part, have been using just white school glue. I brought some, I brought some fusible web with me, but I, it's just too much work to cut it out. I really like to be the little kid in kindergarten, you know, who was working on. Hello, Miss Lisa. Oh, Cheryl, I'm sorry. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. Oh, that's got to be tough. It really has to be tough. So what I am, so I've kind of gone ahead and filled in things. Now, these trees in the background, I did just pale to kind of, I don't want you to pay attention to those, but they're there. Here is the maple tree in the front yard. Now, it's actually bigger than this, but I don't want it to so outdo the house. Hi, Betty Meisner. So Betty Meisner sent me some good information and pictures of things. But, and then this tree, I'm not done with this tree, but it's a bigger leaf tree and I was trying to give it a different personality, but I'm not quite happy with that. And it's too light, then goes immediately dark. So I need to do more transitioning on this. I put some gray fabric up here to kind of 
disguise the side yard a little bit, put some greenery, which we do have over there, but I didn't want to get so carried away. This is an um, uh, homage to my fig tree out there that's really over here and has gotten so big, I didn't want it to block the house. Then I did a transition, which is not good enough yet, but I did, I wanted to get to darker grass and I have to work some more on this. When you transition from one thing to another, the best thing you can do is put a bush there. <laughs> so there are, I, I put some shrubs here, which I do have some perennial flowers that grow in front of the wall. And anytime that you can put some fabric shrub, something in front of something, it gives it instant uh, depth. This also is supposed to be my double file burnum, double file viburnum. And if you really, if it was really where it's supposed to be, it would be here blocking half of this house. It's a very big but magnificent shrub. So I've got things mostly blocked all in. I have refined the sidewalk down to the way it's supposed to be. I've got my birdhouse here. I've got a little sundial here that I really love. And then I put the, um, the yard lamp, the street lamp up. So what I did over here is in trying to kind of this... I did do some, the flower bed here and some fencing that we have over here, but it was like how to show our whole backyard is wooded. So I just, if, and I'm going to cut it off somewhere like this. So don't worry. All my edges are going to be trimmed over here. I will probably, let me see, where will I, I'll probably trim it to about, well, it's kind of hard when you've got these fabrics glued in place, but I'll probably trim it back something like this because I don't, you know, I always leave extra when I'm working on a landscape. And that way, when I leave extra, I can push and pull and, you know, grab it and turn it and not worry that I'm going to damage anything that's going to be in the final quilt. So, now let me see. I think we brought down. Here we go. So, this was, this was the photograph I worked from. And this is what I ended up with. And I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I did a little dogwood tree here. But now... I've got to figure out how to do this. This is a sycamore tree. And sycamore tree has very big leaves. Hi, Art by Nancy Lynn. Hi, Jody. I know, I feel so bad for Cheryl, sweetheart. Gosh. So thank y'all. We're such a good community and we care about people. So thank you so much. Well, it's getting there. And I'm a little, the only thing I may be concerned about is that I might have um, overwhelmed the house a little bit. And so that's what, you know, I need to check. The main thing too, is my picture was taken in late winter, actually about right now, because these were just, you know, daffodils were budding out and things, but I wanted it to be in summer. And that's when I love the yard the most. So that's why I tried to give color. Like I have, I have uh, coming down here, I have ferns, I have um, pincushion, blue pincushion flowers, I have American beauty berries, I have a, a red barberry, which that's as close as I could get. Oh, and I do have a Japanese maple over here that I'll probably try to you know, do some representation. So, okay. So then I was thinking what to do. This tree, this maple right here, which I really should put more leaves on it, but I just don't want to overwhelm the house. That's my biggest problem. And I could always, I guess, come out a little wider up here. 
but it looks a little bit too much like a lollipop, so I probably need to bring it a little bigger. But I used about five different fabrics, and I used some paler where the sun might be catching it, and then down to a very dark right at, at the bottom. So, yeah, this one, this tree over here, this is a star magnolia. And sadly, I think I've got to rework those leaves. <laughs> Looks a little too tropical. But I was thinking, oh, well, the leaves are bigger than the maple. Well, it got too much. So what I'm going to have to do is figure out how to do the sycamore. And the hardest thing for me is I don't want to just cut a blob of fabric out and put, put there. And I think I'm going to have to end up working with it. But what we're going to do today, I'm going to pretend, and this is my weeping cherry tree that we planted here. And so I've got to figure out how do I put leaves on that so that I don't block all of the other work. I may end up doing thread painted leaves because that way I can get them just where I want and keep them leafy enough, you know. It's like I want to represent all this, but honestly, if this was leafed out, you'd miss. You wouldn't see a lot of this up here because it's pretty big and kind of takes over the space. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some ink tints and pretend that I have this all zigzagged down with invisible thread. I'm going to take some ink tints and I'm going to work on adjusting a few of my colors. So one of the things that I wanted to do was to tone down the color of the house. Because it is a sage green with a touch of, let me see, I'm looking to see what else I've got. It's a sage green with a, oh good, I got it open. It's a sage green with a touch of blue. Okay, just a touch. And right now it's a little too turquoise. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick up some of this color. In fact, I'm wondering if I just take this block and kind of rub it on here, how would that work? So I'm going to try that first. And you can use these blocks like crayons or you can um, I'm going to put a little bit more here because of the shadow. Or you can wet your brush with your medium um, and then just spread it on. But I'm going to try this. Let's see what happens. And then I also want to take, this might be, a, my, these look really messy because they've got a fine coating of the textile medium on them. And I probably should be careful and not do that so much because I'm worried in some ways it kind of seals the dye in. And then that makes it hard to use. Boy, I hope, whoops. Well, maybe I'll pull this down. My little birdhouse came down. And I won't tell you that that birdhouse is, has been missing a roof for two years. I bought some popsicle sticks to make little roof shingles. And uh, so I'm going to try to see if I can get Mark to work on that for me. Okay, so now I've, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to take some charcoal or black, maybe this one. Yes, and I want to come along at the top where the roof overhang and put in a few shadows, okay? So come along right under here and here and just kind of emphasize those shadows. So just right here and just right here and 
over here. Just think of where your sun is coming in. And um, now, I'm going to go ahead and put some right across the top of this stone, too. And put a little bit part way down. Okay, let me see. Put in a little shadowing here. And then, oh, I'm going to see if I can do just a tiny under the trim on the porch to give it that shadow line. Okay. All right, then. Put a shadow line right here. Let me get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. In fact, I'm going to use a pencil to do the rest of those shadow lines because it's, it's a little, I'm taking a risk coming in here and using a block to do it. All right, so I'm going to come in and let's see if the colors will bloom for us. Okay. All right. And then put, let me pour a little of this in the lid. So I don't, I, just in case some of these colors are strong enough to run, I don't want them to contaminate my mixture. So I'm going to come in here. Put a little, whoops. Now, right here, I just accidentally got up on that white trim. I'm not going to worry because I have white ink tints, but I also could take a little touch of white acrylic and work. So let's see. I'm hoping, let me come, whoops. Make sure that if any of that dark gets on your brush to wipe that off. So I'm not going to do that dark up there yet. Let me get this first. And what I'm doing is putting a little more sage in this and then some yellow because the sun is shining on it. And I noticed that in the... In the photograph, you could see a yellowish look to it. But be careful with your shadowing. Let me get a little more liquid and run that shadowing right up under that eave. And make sure to get this little piece of the house over there. So, and if the shadowing isn't up high enough, then I'll come back with my pencil and do that. And if it's too much... You can always take, let me grab a tissue or paper towel, and you can easily wipe the excess off. Like right here, it's just a little too much. So I wet it and wipe the excess. Also, don't put too much of the fabric medium because then it becomes almost like a vinyl product. So you've got to be careful. Over here, I'm going to go back and see if I can get. Okay. And once this dries, it will be lighter. But if you're at all worried, then let me see. You can come back with some white ink tints. Whoops. I just took a little piece off of, of my stick. Whoa. Okay. Hold on. It was crumbly because of the um, fabric medium I've gotten on it. So there's got to be a better way. I know you're supposed to use the fabric medium, but with those sticks, I probably should just use water and then put fabric medium over it. Although, how do you keep it Anybody that's really experienced with these that wants to chime in and tell me, please do. I would appreciate that. But as you can see with what I'm doing right now, it is pretty workable. 
it's not an app. I know it's a die. It's a fabric die, but it's not an absolute. And in fact, one of these little crumbles. Oh, well, I was going to try to pick it up and put it where I have too much, a little smudge on my white. Okay, now let me get in here and get this. I don't want it on my shutter. This is looking too dark. I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it dry. But then I can just come in and rub a little of that white. Or you can go back and get a little bit more yellow. And there, let me get that shadow, push that shadow up. Okay. Okay, so let's let that dry. Now I'm going to come over and develop these colors with the fabric medium. Whoops, let me stay away. I want to stay away from the dark shadowing until I've gotten the sagey color worked on because I don't want to contaminate my brush and make everything dark. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the shadowing up here and I'm going to bring a little bit and put it behind where this tree is. So let me come up here. I've got too much shadowing now. It comes down too far. So I'm going to take a little bit of that white and okay. Let me lighten that up because I want it to be a pretty distinct line. Okay. All right. Now I'm, whoops, I'm sorry. I was out of range. Okay. So I've got this. And the main thing is make sure you take, and I like to thin my fabric medium with water because I don't want to make this like vinyl. I don't want to get carried away putting too much of the textile medium until it changes. I don't want to change the hand of the fabric any more than I have to. Okay, so now put this up there. All right, and then come and run it down this side right here, which has a little bit of a shadow from the gutter. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. It should dry a different color, a much lighter color. And once I've let it dry, then I'll see how I feel about it. Now, I'm going to stop transition from the, um, the, the block and go to pencils because... I'm going to go to pencils. Oh, I'm sorry, pneumonia COVID. Oh, I'm so sorry, Denise. This is Denise's one year anniversary with us. Yay. That is wonderful, Denise. We are tickled to have you here. You are such a joy. So thank you so much. All right. Now, I'm going to take... And don't forget, if you ever get, okay, these are all, if you ever get a package of these and they have a pencil called Outliner, that means it has no ink in it. It truly is just for outlining. I'm going to come in here. Now is when I'm going to add dimension to my objects, the shadowing. So you've got to know my son's coming, my son sun is coming from this direct in this direction from over here and so the shadows are going to be on the opposite side of where my 
son is coming from. I I should have written Marsha a note to tell her that I changed this show. I was just so busy and we got back so late and we had to then grab some dinner and I'm sorry, I should have let her know. Also, I'm going to take a nice brown. I'm not really fond of how I, the fabric that I did on this tree. So I'm going to see if I can pull in some brown and then some gray and kind of buff it, bump it up a little touch. Let me see. Ink, black, and bark. Hmm. Let me see. I might want to come get a little bit of this charcoal color. Because trees are really, it, it, it's an unusual color somewhere in between, gr mostly gray with brown thrown in. I know as kids we always drew the brown stem, green leaves, you know, everything very simple. But trees are a lot more gray than brown. In fact, I think I saw Dolores here. I hope so. She can give us some really good opinions on that. She is our resident artist for sure. So I'm just going to round to give the tree a rounded shape. I'm putting a little outlining here. Then I'm coming back over here and def doing a definite outlining there. Now, let's see how that changed. What I recommend that you do is do a little bit at a time with the ink tints. And because you can go too far and it's a lot harder to take off the dye paint than it is to go back and put more on. So I definitely think this looks much better now for that tree. So I'm very, very happy with that. All right. Well, that looks good. Now, let's come and see. I was working on this tree in the middle. And ink black. I'm going to go with, give it some more of this bark. If you have any branches showing up in the leaves, remember that they're going to have shadowing from the leaves. So, don't be afraid to, to draw some shadows. But this is what I like. I like to add, to use a fabric that suggests bark and then come in here with my ink tints and my thread painting or thread sketching and give it that extra, that extra sparkle. But this should give the tree some roundness and... Just a little contouring. Now, if you're if you're going to contour dark, then consider contouring light. So you could come in here. I don't know if this will come out pale enough, but I'm going to put some right here on the edge. Let's see. All right, and then I'm going to come in with just a little bit of yellow because yellow can often, you know, gives you the light because that's what causes the light and shadow is the sun. So sometimes adding, and mostly you would add it down where you know the sun can reach it. Don't put it all up in here because that's where your shadow is. So now let's see how this affected this tree. Let's see if we end up getting some more realism in this tree. And I think that gives the tree 
I think it gives the tree a lot more excitement. And you could even come in with a little touch of the white. My big pack of ink tents I left upstairs. So I just had to quickly grab what I had down here to use. But, all right. So I think that gives a little more interest to the trees. Then I'm going to come up and keep your pencils nice and sharp if you want to make small lines. And hold on one second. I need a straight edge. All right, so let me try one thing. Okay. Oh, thank you. Ink tints really brings it to life. Now, one thing you'll notice too, I use a lot of landscape. You see how I'm erasing some of this that I did with the block? Because I'm afraid it's not straight enough and it's not going to look right. Architectural architectural designs are very uniform and very straight. When I'm all done with this, do you notice you can see how this fabric is fraying a little up here? So that's where it would help if I had done, if I had done the zigzag with invisible thread before I do that. That's why I normally say do it in this order because all of this erasing and stuff just wants to fray the edges of that fabric. So I will make sure that I put in, I'm going to make sure, whoops, come on, come on, come on. Whoops, it's stuck. Okay, I'm going to come in here and put a line, but I want to use a ruler. Don't feel like, well, it's drawing. You no, know, some things you have to have a straight line for. So I'm going to come in here and draw this line. Okay. You can always draw other lines differently. But when you need a straight line, you need a straight line. An architectural Architecture needs straight lines. All right. Let me let's see. Now, I may have to, I may have to come in with some white to cover up. And a lot, of, some of this messiness is coming from my hands. Keep your hands really clean when you use ink tents. All right. So let me get those lines. Now, when with ink tents, you may want to use the outliner for some of these very sharp, crisp lines that you might not want you might not want in any way for some of these lines to spread. So don't, don't feel badly if you use an outliner instead of the die. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I keep this line relatively straight. If I end up putting too many black marks on this and I can't get it the way I want, all I have to do is tear this fabric up, do it again. So now I'm going to take a very fine line brush and see if I can get that shadow to bloom. And it doesn't take much. With the dark colors and ink tints, it doesn't take much. And the reason I'm doing this line is there's a shadow board. There's a board there that gives a shadow line. And a lot of what we find in architecture are shadowing, which gives the building some texture. Just being very careful 
just to put the developer, the liquid, which in this case is textile medium, being very careful where I put it so I just have the color where I want it. Then I'll come here and do this little line. And just because you put some ink tints down doesn't mean you have to develop it. You can, if you think, oh, I'm not sure about that line. I'm not sure if I got enough off. You can just ignore it. So, or like I did, try erasing it where you don't, where you didn't intend to have it go. My porch roof might not be perfectly straight because I'm having a little tricky time getting that line where I think it should be. So it looks like that this line might be headed downhill. If that's true, then I will add a little piece of housing color to bring it up. And so I don't have too much white there. So if my roof starts to look off, then I will just get a piece of the house color and just barely bring it up a little. All right. Now we're going to take that black eyeliner, uh, outliner. Whoops. Let me grab my ruler. All right. We want to make the doors come to life. I need to move this where I know I'm not going to knock it over. Okay, we need to bring, okay, do you see, in fact, right here, I can actually put more outlining on. Because do you see how, what definition that shadow line gives? So I will, let me see if I can bring just a little bit more. This one, it has a line right here. The trim has a front part there. Okay. And here it does, but it really is not showing. I'm going to put this one about right here. Sometimes the way a house looks, you would think that, well, if this one's over this part over that, then this one should be up here. But when you're looking at dimension, when you're looking at uh, perspective, it can throw certain things off. So like this, from this perspective, this tree is way, it's further over but I wanted to put my weeping cherry in, which you can't even see right here. So I had to kind of move things. So you take some artistic license, but perspective, if I'm just a little bit further this way, taking this picture, it changes the look. If I'm dead on, it changes. Every angle changes where everything is on your work. So now I'm going to come in and give these windows, I'm going to give these windows some definition. And hmm, I'm debating over whether to use, I might try this bark instead of the stark black, especially where the sun is coming in because, okay, so it has a shadow line here. I don't know if I want to make it too stark. I might want, okay. This is another chance for you. Come in here with your snips and make sure the fabric, I want to put this over here so I don't lose my cute little birdhouse. All right. I had to cut a uh, birdhouse fabric out a couple times, but it looks like I don't have enough space right here where I have the reflection in this window. So I'm going to come along and just carefully with my snips, carefully trim that up. 
And then here it came in front of the bush, and the bush's glue is dry. So there we go. Just cut that part out. All right. I'll come back with my ruler and my bark, which is not quite as, as stark. And I'm going to come back and right here just carefully do a little outlining. Now, you know what I may do? What would probably be easier is I have some of the really tiny microtex, and that might be the best thing for, for, for doing the outlining. Because basically what I'm doing is outlining. So I might wait for that because then I know I can get my line exactly where I want. But what I will do is come in here and do my window pane. And because that line can be just a touch softer. Now I have to divide this into three. It's scary when you're using something that's mostly permanent on this. But this doesn't have to be quite so sharp. It's only showing in the shadows. Now, before I go to put the ruler, I want to mark the center because sometimes when you put the ruler, you can't quite see what is the center and what isn't. So if you have to, don't feel at all bad to take a ruler with tiny measurements and grid out your windows. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so now you can't really, let me see if you can get up close to this. This is what I've done with the ink tense pencil. So now I'm going to take, what did I do with that tiny brush? There it is. I'm going to take the tiny brush because I want to be very careful and not spread the color. I just want it just where I put it. So I'm going to come and develop that. And you'll see how then it comes in. And this gives a little softer color than doing a stark black. It also gives shadow around this window pane where the trim is. Because when you're thinking of this, think about how a window is made. I love renovating houses, so I'm constantly thinking, okay, you've got sashing around that glass, and then you've got a shadow trim, you know, decorative trim. But see how I just put, I just put the textile medium just where I drew. I don't just come in and wet the whole thing. I want to keep this a little crisper than that. The only place where I wet the whole thing was in the siding where I wanted to tint it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, this is working out pretty good. So what I'm going to do is come back in and finish that window. And my hand is feeling pretty steady. If that, my hand wasn't, I would use that ruler. But I'm going to come down and finish this window. See, this is where if it had been sewn down, it'd be a whole lot easier to do this. Then I'm going to come in here and give... A bigger shadow. Wow. Where the pencil picked up a little bit of the moisture, it started to bloom. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do another shadow line where the trim comes across the top of the window. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go out and look at how your house is built. And that's what will give it the realism. All right, so now I'm going to come with my tiny brush and I'm going to go over my lines. Now, if you're using 
like if you, because these ink kits are very expensive, I understand. But if you're using um, regular colored pencils, then you won't be adding the liquid to it. It's just for ink tents purposes. But now I'm going to come in with the black and I'm going to do a few suggestive lines on these shutters because I really want them to look like shutters. So let's see how these do. That shutters will have a shadow line on the side away from the sunshine. <clears throat> So they'll have a shadow line going down here, but I'm going to do all these little shutter lines. And I have found that just outlining things like the shutter, give it a better presence. Just leaving it as it is, it, it you want things to stand out. So now I'm going to come along and do lighter. Do, I'm not pressing as hard for these because these are the faded out shutters because of the sun is shining on them. But let me give a sh make sure I did the shadow line down this side and a little shadow here because of that tree. All right, I'm going to come down this one. Whoops, I'm out of range again. Hold on. I forgot I was let me come back out a little bit. Okay. I'm sorry and I need to be watching to see if I'm in range. But just a bare little line on this side because that's the sun side. But I'm going to do a heavier shadow line over here. And then a little shadow from where the bushes are kind of in front of it. And let me finish doing the little... I forgot what they're called, but the way they're, they, these shutters were actually made of wood. I, I was real pleased when I went to paint them. Okay, so just a little light line here. All right. Oh, and now that I've got the pencil, I want to make sure that that shadow is right up, up nice and high. All right, now I'll take my medium. And let's see how this does. Okay. We'll see how that develops. Let's try this one over here. It's just very subtle, little, a very subtle little horizontal lines so that you can actually see. Let me see if I can bring it in for you to see it. Okay. Whoops. Come on. So just, just subtle little lines. Okay, now let's go over to this one. And I'm having to rub across because that's a lot of trying to get just on that line. Okay. And then this one. Now. If you put this on and you want to see more of a shutter line than is actually showing, while it is wet, watch how easily it is to see what you're doing. Whoops, let me zoom in for this one. Whoop. Okay. Whoops, stay still. All right. Um. But it's real easy once it's wet to be able to see the little marks that you make. So you could add more like that. 
Okay, so it's just up to you how much you want to see of those lines. All right, I'm going to just put a little more there and definitely do the top of the shutters. That's going to be in that shadow range. But sh putting shadows on things is wonderful. Now, I'm going to bring this out. This is a little teeny piece of a window. It's not big at all. And I need to do a little touch of cutting. I can see that the fabric is not. What I'm going to do, just bring this in. This is the time to do all of this. When you're blocking in colors, a lot of times you might not realize that you've got little bits of under fabric showing through. And that's what I'm cutting right now. There's a little bit of fabric coming from behind the shutter. And now let me make sure I've got enough window edge to show. But it's all these little things that really make a difference in the end. So it's really important for you to do this. And normally I would be doing this as I'm zigzagging with invisible thread. And you know what I'm going to do on some of these fabrics? I think that I am going to, um, I think I'm thinking about putting some fray check. I'm thinking about putting some fray check. Now I want to do a line across here, line across there. Come down this edge of the reflection. Come down here. Come across here. Just deline delineate everything. Okay, then my window sash is going to be right about here. Okay. Okay, and then... I'm going to put an outline of that one, but you, I can't really do the panes, so I'll just have this and this. And let's see, <clears throat> let's see now how that comes out, because even though it's a partial window, I think it's still important to see it. A little outlining here. Looks like that fabric needs to be sewn down. But hopefully now you see why we do the invisible stitching before we do anything else. Because you don't want your fabric to start fraying. All of that. So I'm, I'm looking at this over here. And I'm seeing that even though I was careful, do you see how that some of this is bleeding a little bit out? So I'm going to do any further outlining with my micron pen. But I wanted to show you the difference that ink tents can make. And whoops. Whoops. Okay. And let me see. There's another thing I might want to do. Where is the bark one? We have, we put some bat, batten, battens on the house to get up in the eaves to give it that modern look. We were trying to modernize this house a few years ago. And that's why we put the, um, that's why we put the stone on the front and we painted it because we just, we wanted to take a plain little ranch and kind of bring it into the 21st century. So now let me see. So let's see. I'm hoping I didn't put too much because the battens barely show. Barely show. Yeah, they don't even show this much. So I may have to come back 
over them with white paint or replace the fabric. Let me see. Yeah. Unfortunately, I should have done, probably done some stitching. So I may end up replacing the eaves, especially since it started to um, unravel along the edge. But honestly, it's not that strong. So where is my little piece of white? I was worried how that would do. Well, let me see. And, you know, honestly, when you're doing all this painting around here, having that white fabric right there is pretty tricky to work with. Because how do you keep it white? Ink Tets has white in it, but it's not a strong white. All the colors, it will not cover all the colors. And there have been times that I tried to make it cover. And honestly, what it did was just kind of make a milky look. It just would not cover. Yeah, I can see already it's still, it's not, it's not covering. Yep. Soon you see how that, in fact, when I add the medium on it, when I add the medium, it just, the, the color comes back through. So I'm going to put a new piece right there. And you know what I'll do is I'll probably, I'll make sure that I, um, I'll make sure that I have everything else done, put that in there and, um, what am I trying to say? Come on, Deb. Words, words, Deb. <laughs> but I will make sure I put it in and I zigzag it before I touch it. And because these, I, I'm just, there are threads everywhere. All right. Now, I've got the shadowing in. I'm afraid to do too much shattering. I mean, shadowing here because... I don't want it to run, but let me see if I have that tiny little brush, and let's see if this shattering the show, and just so you know, it does, yeah, that looks good. It doesn't bother me at all to replace this piece of fabric, and not at all. I'll get that replaced, and then we will, because you know what? I'd already, see where I'd already overmarked this right here. So I'll put a new piece on there. I think I'm going to use a micron pen for around this door. Um, although there is one thing I could do. Let me, there's a glass panel here and I need to just, this is a shadow right here that's coming from one of the posts. And I think it's too dark. Let me see if I can pull this up. Mark said, what's that line right there by the door? And I said, well, in the photo, there was a shadow line. And I was trying to copy that. Okay. Then let me show you that shadow line too. So you will... Okay, right here on either side of the door is a glass panel. But see that shadow line? That's what I tried to do by putting that fabric in. But it just didn't, it just didn't look right. It didn't look like a shadow line. So you can do, you can be as careful as you want and think that you are replicating what you see and sometimes it just won't look right so don't worry about that just please don't worry do the best you can and don't worry so now what i did is just put just a little bit of color here to show that this these are windows beside the door 
because I have to do something. It's really tricky to know how to make it look like glass, but I have to do something that lets you know. If you see here, you can really barely make out what is that, but I know it's glass. So sometimes when you work on your photo, you can't just replicate what you see. Sometimes you have to put in what you know. And this is the only way that I know that I can think of right now to make you realize those are glass panes. And I think it's looking pretty good. I like how those came out because it's subtle. And that's what you want. You know, glass, <laughs> glass is nothing if but subtle. So there we go. I like that. So this part worked out good. I'll bring you in a little and show you that. Delineating, delineating the class worked. That was a success. And this, oh, around the door, that is a glass window. It's a glass door. But I'm thinking doing a little... Just a little something to show reflection, to kind of give you that feeling of reflection. Is also a good thing. And I like rubbing off the excess. Yeah, I think this is my way of saying this is glass. Not just a door with a red and white door. So I think that's going to be good. All right. We're almost done with our time. So let's see where else. I know exactly where else. I want to come in here and make this look even more like the stone we put on the front of the house. And this was just pretend stone. You know, it's really, it looks so real but it's made from concrete and it was so easy to put up. We put it right over the brick using type in mortar, mortar mix. And I'm going to make sure I get that shadow up just right. And right here, do a shadow by this post. Yeah. On on the way away from the sun side of each of the posts, come in here and put your shadows. I even did, I don't know if you can see, but on this porch, I even did my chairs. <laughs> here is supposed to be my chairs and a little table. Here's the other chair. I just love doing all this stuff. And here are the lanterns to the front of the house, a little sign that I have here. And I'm actually going to use Micron. This is, this little thing right here is a um, mosaic. I put mosaics on a piece of wood and then put the number, the house numbers on top of the mosaics. And so I'm going to try to use my micron and write that on there so we always remember our address. Okay, I'm going to come up here and do some more shadowing. And here is, I'm going to show you this. Oh, honey, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You're a doll baby. Okay, now this is the shutter before I did the ink tints. Here are the shutters after. And th even though this one needs a better shadow line, but I think it makes such a big difference. So I'm going to come in here. Oop, that's bark. I need to get the ink black. And come in here and put a slight line just to give it definition. And let me come up top here and do my shadow line better. A better shadow line on this post here. And I may come in and do, this is paint, our house is painted brick. So I may even put a few little 
brick lines. Whoops, get on camera, Deb. I may even do a few little, just a few little lines like this to let you know that it's brick. Whoops. Okay, now watch, just, just doing a few random lines like this, not too many. Just a few random lines will let you know, oh, that's a brick house. It'll give that texture. And then when you come in with your brush and you touch those lines and they bloom just a touch, then you have just given some more great, great texture to your house. But let me come back this way because I had done some brick lines here and hopefully they'll bloom. And then I'm working on this shutter. So I give it an outline. Oh, continue my shadow line across. Really, really important. If you don't have shadow lines, everything reads flat. Because what you're doing is trying to make it look three-dimensional, but you only have two dimensions. You have the width and the height. That's it. How do you make something look three-dimensional? You do that with shadowing, with putting things in front of other things. Now watch when I bring this shutter to life. It just amazes me. No wonder people love ink tents so much. But watch, let me see. Let me see if this, I might need to put more of a shadow line back there. But then I come across where I've done all the little tick marks to make it look like a shutter. And it will bring life to it. And if I didn't put enough shadow over here once I've wet it, look at this. It just makes the pen, the pencil come to life. Let me put some more shadowing up here. But it's just very subtle. But let me show you the difference. You see the shadowing here. You see the shadow and the overhang of the post. Look over here. I've barely done any shadowing. Do you see the difference? Oh, hi, Linda. So I've done, I've only touched on it. And there's so much more. Like the stairs coming off the porch, coming down off the porch, the shadowing, uh, the little lines in the concrete, all of this stuff makes such a difference. This, my little concrete sundial, it'll look more like a sundial when I outline this. Now, you could outline it. If you don't have ink tints or you don't want to use um, just colored pencils, then you could do it with thread. But for me, this is so much easier. And I can even do that little thing of part of the sundial like that. So now I have my sundial. But just by doing this, putting the few lines, getting the edges in, then when I come in with my fabric medium, it will come to life. Now you've got a sundial. So I absolutely love, love, love. I'm going to come in here and I'm, whoops, let me, I'm going to scale out because I keep forgetting and doing things out of range. I am going to put little, little, I'm going to make these more realistic, little kinds of lines and things. I'm going to put my stairs in. You can come in. When I'm done, I'm going to take and use hand embroidery and put some daffodils maybe, maybe some of my blue, um, Flowers along the driveway, 
I'm, I'm really going to add some of the fun things to make it a little more realistic. I can come in with these pens and I can better delineate some of these branches on this little dogwood. And then when I bring the developer and all of a sudden you're going to see you're going to see a little layering that things you didn't, whoops, was I, I was out of range again. You can take and do, you can just bring a little bit more realism to all your plants. You can come in here, like right now, this dogwood kind of disappears. It's just a tiny little volunteer out in the front that I really love. But once you just do a little bit of work to it, what did I do with my yellow one? There's my yellow one. So if I come in here and I put, you know, a little lighter on this side, and then you will see how the dogwood will then, all of a sudden, you see the dogwood. The dogwood all of a sudden has a presence. So it's going to take me quite a few hours to work on this. And I wish I had not drawn these lines here. There's not a whole lot I can do to cover them up. But I'm going to get ready and hold this up and show you. And then once by next week, I will have a new piece right up here. But you now you can see the glass in the windows. I'm not going to outline. I'm not going to do the little lines because remember the windows kind of, it does do a little touch of bleeding. So that's where I will come in and outline this very carefully with my micron pens that do not bleed at all. I will take and outline my little, any little feature, these little chairs, I'll outline the post, all of that with my micron because I don't want anything to run. But you see now what we have done to this tree here. And I will then do a whole lot more on this one. And oh boy, I've still got hours and hours to do because I have now fallen in love with it and it's going to be a wonderful keepsake for Mark and I, because one day we're going to move closer to a lake or the ocean, and I want to have a memory of this. So we will bring it to life, and, you know, you can use ink tense pencils to bring a little more texture to the roof line. There's just so much you can do. And like I said, I've got to do more blending here. I've got to do my sycamore leaves. I'm really concerned. How am I going to do sycamore leaves? Because they're big and bassoony and all that. So I've got more to do. But at least I'm, I hope I've shown you with the ink tints how you can really bring it to life. And that's the best part. This is the fun part. And then once we get in with the thread sketching and we're going to, that's even another layer. So take your time, do it the way, do it the way it's going to last. And because this will be around long past my years. So it was so nice to see Linda McCollum. Thank you. It's so good to see you, sweetheart. And I hope if anybody else, Barbara Smith came in, but um, thank you for being here. I know it's not my normal night, but last night we had so many errands that just glommed on us at the last minute. So I'll show you this one more time, then I'll say goodbye for now. And hopefully next week I will have more things, a lot more things completed and have everything stitched down because that is really, really important. Okay. And do notice 
where I didn't want a lot of attention paid. And this is the trees behind the house. I did a light color. So they disappear kind of, kind of become, they're there, but they're not. Do you save your brighter, brighter? Look, see how it goes from duller to brighter. The closer you get, the pine straws brighter. That's how you give that sense of depth. And I think it's doing a pretty good job of that. So, okay, everybody, I hope that you're learning something from this and that, you know, if you have any questions at all, you will ask me the questions. We started out just enlarging the photograph we wanted to use. I made it in black and white so it would show up on the light box better. And we've now taken it to the blocking in the color stage. And now we've started the finishing stage. So please, oh, and my very favorite is Superior's Monopoly, but I also like um, YLIs. Any, it's, if you can use a polyester invisible thread. It has less stretch, which means it'll break less. It'll bunch things less. Um, and just take your time and just work on it. It has been great to see you tonight. Have a good weekend. I'll be here Sunday again at 3 o'clock and show you the fun I'm having with English paper piecing and with our red work. So, and hopefully I'll have a chance to let you know what I'm going to do with water painting on fabric. Thank you for spending time with me, Betty Meisner. Thank you so much, Nancy Lynn. It is great to see all of you, Jody, all, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good evening, and I'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye, everybody. Do something good just for you. Bye-bye, everybody.